Hi. Hey, hi. Okay, hi, hi, Mr. Disney. How, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you, Miss Davidson. David. So, um, for the background for some of you guys, um, I'm Emma Davidson. I'm president of the Oxford and Cambridge Society in Malaysia, and uh, I'm also deputy head of the sixth form at College Jingu Jaffa. And uh, Mr. Mark Disney is one of the other. And we've actually been talking about keeping our students busy and engaged. Um, and we're particularly thinking about the Form 5 students, SPM students, and Lower 6 students with a view to their university applications. So, um, Mark, why do you think these students need to keep really busy and engaged and do valuable, enriching things during lockdown? Why do you think it's important? Well, I mean, in six months' time, when um, especially sixth form students start applying for, for university, one obvious question they're going to ask is, what did you do in the lockdown? Did you spend, you know, um, 12 hours a day on uh, TikTok and um, PUBG and uh, Minecraft? Or did you devote some of that time to enrichment, to um, trying to understand your subject a lot more clearly, or, or just wider reading? Um, there are just a bewildering amount of um, options and opportunities out there um, uh, for students to access. And I think what's going to happen is that the, you know, the bigger name universities that, um, you know, are going to be interested in what uh, kind of uh, you've devoted your time to, but also for your own personal enrichment. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity. I know that uh, it's a terrible business, this whole lockdown, but it's a wonderful opportunity for um, uh, students to spend you know, time. Uh, it could be weeks. It could be months. We hope not. We hope not. It, but uh, it could be months. Um, in order to expand their knowledge in, in whatever area they're interested in. Um, if you think about it, you're never going to get this opportunity again. Uh, there's never going to be a time where you are housebound um, for weeks on end. So make the most of it, is what we're saying. Mm, yeah. And I, I think um, a lot of this idea of wider reading, for me, is that students are quite young and they're asked to make decisions about what they want to study at university at very young ages and one benefit of wider reading is that you can really test what you're interested in so if you do an online course in engineering say or you read a book on engineering and it's not as interesting as you thought it would that maybe is a little bit of a red flag that you thought you wanted to study engineering but but maybe you need to explore other areas and I, I think that understanding what really interests you is it's quite important and as you say this is an ideal time to do that right um, they've got months so we talk about um wider reading how do students even know where to start for you know if you're interested in law how do you know which law books you should be reading right i mean uh, th this is where you know independent research is going to be crucial i mean there are people you can ask um uh, I think one of the things that uh, you're planning on doing, um, uh, with, we're talking actually about uh, organizing um, an Oxbridge um, essay contest, aren't we? Which I guess filters into this. Um, and we will be having, uh, you know, we, we are in touch with people who are you know, engineers and lawyers and doctors and so on, uh, who will be getting to judge this. I'm sure we could get uh, subject specific information out there. But really the point is, if you, know, if, if you are, regard yourself as in that top tier of students, you know, you really shouldn't be looking for too much advice. Um, in a sense, you know, you are self-selecting. You're, you're a top student because you've got the initiative, because, um, you know, you understand that uh, wider reading is really crucial. And I don't think there's ever been a time I can remember where um, everybody had access to this. So if you're thinking, for example, of law, right? Um, you mentioned law. Well, there are so many famous novels um, uh, that you could use this time to read. They're uh, freely available online. Um, virtually all of them are copyright free because they're older novels. So if it was law, for example, you might want to read Crime and Punishment. You might want to read Bleak House, uh, Charles Dickens. Um, you might want to read um, uh, you know, some, some of the older political documents. Um, there are some fantastic things you could read about the American Constitution or about the development of British law. Or you could read something more modern. I mean, there are a number of very famous modern um, novels from 
To Kill a Mockingbird, up to the John Grisham series that deals specifically with, um, with law. Uh, and you shouldn't be doing this because it's a, a chore. You should be doing it because you've got the opportunity and time now to do that uh, and treat it as a, a, as a pleasure. Uh, the other thing that you were mentioning, Emma, was that um, uh, online courses that are available. Well, again, these are, you know, these have been around for a long time, of course, some of them 10, 15 years. But now um, they are so easily accessed and so user friendly. And I'm sure we'll be putting up links to some of them. But places like uh, Frontera, um, uh, um, uh, edX, uh, which is a which is a Harvard based um, a program, you can sign in. It's absolutely free. Um, you don't actually have to do any work and some of them are very short, but, but go and explore what they have to offer. Uh, you can actually take certificates at a lot of these, Coursera and Frontera, uh, at edX as well. You can pay an extra $50, $150 and actually get certificated, but you don't really need that. And back to what you were just saying, um, this is a great opportunity for the kids in Form 4, Form 5, Lower 6 especially, to really read around a subject, maybe take a two, three week course in some area of engineering and you'll discover, actually, I prefer something else, bioscience or, or um, yeah. you know, a, diff a different area. So it is a great chance for you to have a deeper understanding of what it is that you're going to study later on. Yeah, so at the end of this, we'll put some links up. Um, I was looking at Future Learn, and they have some amazing courses that are just two or three weeks long, a few That's hours right. a week that you do. Um, the, yeah, there's so many out there, Coursera course as well, um, and some of the TEDx videos that you can watch. Yeah. I know that some of the universities have really good reading lists. So if you're, for example, thinking of doing um, philosophy and psychology, you could go to say the Oxford um, page of that course and yep. they will have recommended reading for the first year. And that's one area where some of our top students have found very specific books that are, are useful. Yeah. Um, I remember Maisie had one about um, why geese don't get fat, which All right. was uh, okay. uh, <laughs> the first year reading list for her. She read it, and she was actually asked about things related to the book. Um, in her interview um, for Cambridge. So yeah, the, the universities them, themselves. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the other one that I really love is Cambridge University's HE Plus site. Right. Um, yeah. and, and the others, like, you know, UCL Minds has one, Oxford has Oxplore. Yeah. Um, they all have their own sites, but I, I particularly enjoy the the yeah. Cambridge HE Plus one. I keep coming back to that with some of my students. So some so of the so American sites. Some of the American sites are great as well. I mean, the um, mm -hmm. you know the the range of things that you could you could uh, set yourself to do uh, is quite remarkable. And you know, on the other front, for if we're talking specifically uh, specifically about students, I mean, if you are in especially lower six, I suppose, or form four, even form five, perhaps especially form five. Uh, now is a great chance if you're taking a, a UK-based syllabus rather than a Malaysian syllabus. But now is a great time for you to be um, just getting ahead with the, with the syllabus um, because of the exam situation. If you're a Malaysian and you're taking SPM, well, you've really only just started um, your Form 5, haven't you? Um, so exams aren't until October, November. So in a sense, SPM kids are maybe less affected, but they could again or should be using this time to make sure they don't fall behind with the um, with the syllabus, but it, it strikes me that that you know with with no school um, out there, um, students do have an extremely um, a, well a, a hugely increased amount of time on their hands um, because all the other things that you normally do right just the socialising and so on is is not there. So you know you've really got to use this. And all those things. ECAs and things. ECAs are happening. gone, just yeah. hanging I mean, around I mean, with your friends, it's, 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 you know, it's gone. So um, yeah. do, some, do something. Not, not, a, not a big use of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, talking about um, exams, although um, it looks like the AS exams um, and IGCSE exams are not going to go, but particularly for those that are not doing AS exams, mm -hmm. um, they can definitely start preparing for things like them if you're a medic you can start looking at um, your UCAT exam if you're a lawyer you're going to do the ELNA exam um, and if you're thinking of Oxford and Cambridge you can start and 
doing some research on those admissions tests, the pre-admissions tests. Absolutely. Um, Especially for I mean, you yeah. can't teach people how to do them, but you've got to really do lots of practice in them to understand the kind of questions that you're going to get and the way yeah. that you need to think to do them. Absolutely. Um, so that you're not blindsided by, by the level and the type. I mean, so, I mean, students who are, you know, either finishing STPM or finishing um, or do, doing STPM or finishing A levels um, this summer, then the obvious thing is to get online and to look at your University of Choices reading lists for for the first year students and just get a head start on it. Um, uh, it's the same thing, I think, with lower six students. Um, you know, they'll simply be starting the second part of their A levels early. And for IGCSE kids, um, again, you know, you, they should be reading up on what's required in the first term of, um, of A-levels so that when they do start, um, they're already, you know, well ahead of the curve. So, um, I, you know, I think the key message is that, is that you know, yeah. they, they need to see this as an opportunity, not as a, not as a threat. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, I think, I think the other thing for those, sorry, the, those students who are organized really is to get ahead on some of the things that we know are coming up, like personal statements for UCAS are still going to be needed. Well, why don't you get that done now? If you're doing an extended project qualification, try get that done now. Yeah. Um, and certainly for the US, a lot of them are now coming out and saying that SATs may, may be optional. Yeah. Um, but you will still have to do those essays. So you could make a start on those essays and do those now so that as soon as schools reopen, you can focus on what's happening in the classroom because some of the other thing that you things that you have to do for your application you you've actually done a lot of that work already no absolutely and um and and then you know on uh, you know on on the other front away from purely academic um you know you were talking about this uh, just recently but there are lots of things that students could and should be doing um just on their own for example, you know, I think you were talking about um, creating your own YouTube channels, uh, creating podcasts, um, having group, um, doing group work with other students, with, you, with your classmates. You don't need to spend all time, all your time online with them uh, playing Minecraft. Um, there are all kinds of projects that you could do. Maybe you want to expand on that. Yeah. So I, I know talking to some of, some of our um, really sort of, Right, enthusiastic students. There's a group of them who are building a website um, to teach their juniors about science. Um, there is also a group of Form 5 students who have got their own podcast channel and they're, they're looking at making some podcasts. I think their first podcast is going to be contrasting the coronavirus with other virus outbreaks that you've had. Obviously, you know, the, the big one is the Spanish flu, but um, there were also other ones in the 50s and 60s flu outbreaks. Um, so, so working as groups as well, you obviously can still work online. So, so working with a, a group of like-minded peers. The other thing really is just sort of for the computer science guys, just build a website, build an app, come up with something. There's a group of students coming up with um, an app for the school shop. Um, so obviously they can still work on that. Um, to, together in the holidays, um, they can make a lot of progress on that. And then you've also got engineering projects that you could do at home. I, I, one of the complaints in the universities is that computer science students and engineering students don't actually do anything or make anything. Yeah. It's all very academic and book based. Well, get out there and explore what's in your house that you can make with things in your own house. Um, if you look at the extended project qualifications that some of our students do, there is an opportunity to build an artifact mm -hmm. and then write an essay, or you could even record a YouTube video in it. So you build something and then you record a YouTube video explaining what you built and why you made those design choices. So you can physically do things like an app or sure. um, a website or something. I mean, apropos of that point, um, students, it's not, it's not too late, actually. If you're in um, the sixth form now, uh, it's not too late to start an EPQ. You, you could probably do it in a couple of months. Um, and because it's um, marked within the school and then only moderated in the, in the UK, um, it's unlikely to be affected by, by exams in the same way. So students who actually opted to do an EPQ made a very wise, uh, lucky, as it turned out, decision, because at least there will be, you know, 
physical um, proof of their um, of, of their results. And it could just be of interest. I mean, um, pick something that you intend to study at university and go in depth. Um, we all hear lots of stories um, with Oxford and Cambridge students who've done an EPQ, turn up at an interview, and then are asked a question related to the EPQ. So uh, they can spend five, 10 minutes impressing um, tutors and, and uh, admissions people uh, with a real in-depth knowledge that takes them beyond SP, uh, SPM, STPM, A-levels, and so on. So uh, these are uh, really useful things to do. The whole point about doing kind of getting involved with teamwork and doing research-based work hugely uh, useful skills um, that students will find uh, once they get to university, especially Malaysian students, I think, who you know, tend to come from a system where everything is sort of done for you uh, and, and your decision-making role is minimized. Uh, what will happen when you get to the UK is that suddenly you're on your own. Um, and so the ability to do research, the ability to work effectively in teams, it's not just sort of cliched nonsense, it, it's really true. It's vital stuff, yeah, yeah. And I think even if you um, don't write an EPQ that's assessed by one of the EPQ exam boards, just going through that process and writing an extended 5,000 word essay on an, on an academic topic, that whole process um, is immensely valuable. And I, I think, you know, if you're not in a school that doesn't offer the EPQ, you can still go through that whole process. Um, and, and still and still do it um, so the other thing that we're looking at in the Oxbridge Society and we've talked a little bit about this for the literature question is we're looking at a series of competitions um, for students form five um, so that's sort of IGCSE year SPM year and, and above up to lower six and upper six and the idea is that there would be a 1,000 word essay. We're still pulling together the final seven categories and questions and what the task is and the judges as well, because they're all gonna need a, a panel of judges and what the prizes are, we need to work that out. Um, but that hopefully will, will give some people a bit of direction mm -hmm. if they're exploring something. Any final, final tips for students out there or parents out there who are thinking, oh my God, what am I gonna do for the next few months at home? Yeah, um, I think, you know, um, you know, this too shall pass, right? I mean, you've got to be looking at, um, you've got to be thinking about the future. I think if you're a, a student now, I can understand the dilemma of form five students to an extent, and obviously upper six students must be concerned. Lower six students and younger students uh, should be seeing this as an opportunity uh, where they've got additional time, their minds are much more focused on, um, you know, what is available out there. Um, and I think it's a great chance to, um, you know, boost your reading. I mean, um, you know, we, we are famous, Malaysians are famous for, for not reading, right? We have a, a very low book uh, readership per, per person. Um, so why not use this as your, as your opportunity? You can, you know, um, uh, and I think the other thing that we haven't really mentioned is, is, is it's very important for students, I think, to, to impose a kind of a self-discipline on themselves. I mean, um, I would say yeah. you know, over the holidays or over the break, you know, maybe eight to 12, you're doing something kind of academic and, and it's something with a, a you know, that's, that's structured, that there's an end product. Uh, it's, maybe it's an essay, maybe it's a project of some sort. And then the rest of the time could be casual reading, casual, um, you know, communicating with friends and so on. Um, but you really want to have that kind of, almost ritualistic discipline uh, and pick the times that are yeah. best for you. Obviously, there's gonna be students out there who are very self-motivated and for them, it's not really a problem. Um, the difficulty is for kids who aren't. And maybe that's where uh, putting them onto some kind of course that they, that they um, attempt to complete, one of these online courses that a parent can also um, follow the student through with. Uh, maybe that's one way of doing it. But well, obviously. the parent can do the course as well. Well, the parent, yeah, the parent, can, the, pa the parent can monitor. <laughs> the parents. Well, yeah, what, uh, well, exactly. What are parents doing at home, right? What are we doing? We we should be doing a program. I'm thinking of doing one on quantum physics. I mean, you, YouTube is YouTube is fantastic. The problem with YouTube, you get lost in that kind of YouTube rabbit hole, don't you? But 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 provided you're on um, programs that are you know, tangentially related to each other. I mean, Malaysian history should be something that students should be taking an interest in. There's so many great things online uh, yeah. that you can follow. 
or politics. It doesn't have to be, you know, science related. It doesn't have to be TED talk related. You know, there are just so many things. There are too many things, right? So you have to be a little bit uh, discriminating in, 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 in what you choose to watch. But um, honestly, I think for a lot of students, apart, yeah, from but the, I, I... apart from the boredom of being trapped at home and all the problems that that uh, entails, in terms of your ability to access knowledge, information, skills, I don't think there's a huge difference. I, I, it shouldn't be a big problem, I don't think. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think just also collaborate with others and discuss your projects mm -hmm. and what you're learning with, with your peers and with your teachers yeah. um, and kind of sharing that learning and, and make them exciting projects. But um, I, I just have this feeling that it's, this is a time that is really going to sort out the wheat from the chaff in terms yeah. of students. And as you say, it's going to be very much for the top universities what did you do in that time? Because if you want to show that you have a genuine interest in um, academic enrichment, on academic challenge, and you're self-motivated, now is the time you're going to be able to show that, I think. Absolutely. Um, yeah. and, and, and anyway, so we, we'll include some links and resources and where to really start pulling on a thread that's going to lead to something very exciting at the end. Uh, I guess just watch the space for the uh, for the um, uh, essay um, competition as well, right? Or for the project. Uh, yes. uh, wh wh when will yeah. that be launched? And also the. Uh, um, well, I th we need to get approval for the funding of the prizes, so we hope a couple of weeks. Okay, brilliant. So, so quite soon. It needs to be quite soon. Um, yeah. And also, we're making videos with Kumas and OUMC. So, um, who are the Oxford and Cambridge Malaysian students, the, the Malaysians that are at Oxford and Cambridge now. Um, so, they're, they're, they'll be useful videos for any anybody that decides they want to apply to Oxford or Cambridge. Fantastic. Okay, All right. Well, thank, thank you very, you much. very much. Nice Good talking to, to you. Okay, bye. See ya. Okay, bye. bye.